Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Has two primary discussions. The first one is about mavois and chaterois that are open to each other, or mavois that have turns or branches off of them. And in what situations do we consider them to be a simple mavoy? And what situations do we consider them to be an open mavoy or a mavoy which opens on both ends in which we need more complicated solutions to make it permitted to carry within them? The Gemara will have a few cases and a number of different halachos in each of the cases. And then towards the end of the daf, the Gemara moves on to the halachos of the beam, which you put over a mavoy entrance in order to make it permitted to carry within it. What are the halachos of that beam? How does it work? And what can you do with that beam? Are there varying ways to actually install the beam? So the Gemara begins, the beginning of the daf is really in the middle of a discussion, um, about a potential machlok is Rav and Shmuel. The Gemara had a statement of Rav, and a statement that Rav Yehuda said, and we didn't know if it was in the name of Rav or Shmuel. And the Gemara first thought that it was Shmuel because the two statements don't fit together and it's a machlok. And the Gemara ended up revising that position and saying, no, 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 the two statements are both Rav. One is talking about whether there was an heir of Chaseris, and one is talking about whether there was not. The Gemara now says, according to our original understanding, that we thought that this was a machlokis. And the two cases are both the same, either both with an air of Chatzairus or both without an air of Chatzairus, what's the Machlok is about. So first of all, what are the cases? So the statement, which was clearly Rav, was referring to the following scenario. You have a nice, long, narrow Mavoy, you walk in on the open end, and all the way to the other end of the Mavoy, the wall that's opposite is down, and it opens into a Chatzar, a courtyard, which is wider than the Mavi. So if you walk all the way through the Mavi and you come out in the wall that fell down there, you'll have Chatzar extending on your left and your right and straight ahead. And actually, in the wall across from you, there's a break in that wall also where it fell down, and it opens into Rosh Hashanah. This situation, Rav said that you are allowed to carry in that Chatzar. You're not allowed to carry in the Mavi. That's what Rav said. The other case that Rav Yehuda said, and we did know if it was Rav Shmuel, and now we're working with our original understanding that it doesn't fit with this, and it's Shmuel, was the same exact case, except instead of it being a chatzar, it was somebody's personal, it was a private backyard, somebody's private yard. The case was the same, but it was a backyard. Now, the Gemara wants to understand what is this machlokas about. Both cases, one of them it's a chatzar, one of them it's a backyard, in the case of the Chatzar, in our understanding, Rav said that you can't carry at all in the Mavi, you can only carry in the Chatzar. In the case of the Yard, and the Gemara is not saying that there's a difference between a Chatzar and a Yard, Shmuel said, according to our understanding, that um, this doesn't need anything special. You view it as if the entire end where the Yard is, is closed. All you need is a regular Lechi or Kaira on the main entrance to the Mavi. And you can carry in the whole thing. You can carry in the yard. You can carry in the mavoy. No problem. So Gemara wants to know. We don't know if there was an Erev here or not. But we're assuming that this Machlokas works whether there was an Erev or there was not an Erev. Both cases are the same. So what is this Machlokas about? So the Gemara says as follows. If there was no Erev, then the Machlokas is whether an Erev is required or not. And that situation is the following halacha, the following y- issue. There's a halacha that if one area is totally open to another area that you're not allowed to carry into, meaning you have one area and a wall fell down in that area, an entire side of that area fell down, and it's now exposed to another area and you can't carry across to that area. So then the first area you can't carry within either. Even within that area, which should be okay, you can't carry into it because it's zero because you may go across to the side where the entire wall fell down. That everybody agrees to. The issue here is as follows. The Mavoy, an entire side of the Mavoy, the side directly across, at the end of the Mavoy, directly across from the opening, that entire side fell down. However, if you're standing in the Chatzar, or the or the yard, you don't have an entire side that fell down, you just have a gap that fell down. Since the yard is wider than the Mavoy, the wall that fell down at the end of the Mavoy is only part of one of the walls of the Chatzar. So the question is, do we view this as 
a wall that fell down completely because that's what happens when you look at it from the mavoi end, or do you view this as a wall which didn't fall down completely because that's how that's what happens when you view it from the yard end. So according to Shmuel, you view it from the yard end, and therefore we don't view it as a wall that fell down completely, and therefore there's no problem to go from the mavoi to the chutzur, from the chutzur to the mavoi, and therefore you can carry within the chutzur, you can carry within the mavoi. There's no issue. Um, because you view it from the Chatzor end, and it's not a wall that fell down completely, it's just a gap, and as long as the gap is less than 10 Amas, it's not a problem. According to Rav, you would say, no, you have to view it from the Mavli end, and therefore when you're standing in the Mavli, the wall fell down completely, you can't carry into the Chatzor because there's no area of Chatzeris, and therefore you can't carry within the Mavli itself, because it's an area which has an entire wall that fell down. Okay, now... What's the story if the if there was an Erev? There is an Erev in all of this. So what's the issue here? So the Gemara says, the issue is, do I view this Mavoy as a Mavoy that's open on both ends to Rishos Sarabim? Or do I say, no, the Mavoy ends at the yard. And then you have a yard. So the Mavoy doesn't go all the way through to Rishos Sarabim. The yard interferes in the way. So according to Rav, I view it as a Mavoy that's open at both ends. And therefore, you can't carry in it unless you have special devices. Because if you stand in the Mavo, you can see Rosh Hashanah on either end. You can walk through to either end. And people will walk through from one Rosh Hashanah to another, across the Mavo, down the Mavo, and across the yard. According to Shmuel, you don't have to worry about that because you view it as if it um, ends at the broken wall, and then there's a yard beyond that. So the Gemara adds a few halachas over here. According to the opinion that we said that you are allowed to carry in the Mavo, Says Raba, it's only if the two breaks in the wall on the two ends of the yard are not directly across from each other. That means if you're walking straight down the mavoi and you have the broken wall directly ahead of you, you can't see straight through to the Rishos Rabbim on the other side of the yard. The break has to be offline. It has to be to the left or to the right. Um, Rav Mishashi says, it's also only if the yard belongs to a few people. If it belongs only to a single individual, we have a problem. We're afraid he may build a house in the yard. What's going to happen if he builds a house in the yard? That may make the yard smaller, and now the side wall of the yard may just be an actual extension of the side wall of the mavoi. The yard on at least one side may not extend to the left and to the right of the mavoi. It may be straight flush with the wall of the mavoi extending all the way through. In a case like that, Rabbi Yosef has said clearly that we view it as if the mavoi goes all the way to the end and through Rosh Hashanah, even though it's there's only one wall that extends all the way. The yard extends outward to the right, let's say. But still, we view that as it goes all the way. You need to have both walls of the mavoi not continuing through the yard. And as soon as you come out of the mavoi into the yard, you have you can turn left or right. So now the Gemara says, who, hold on a second. Who told you they were actually concerned that things are going to change? That somebody will create a house in the m- middle of his mavoi and things will change? change like that are we actually concerned about things changing and therefore uh we would not allow you to carry even now lest it change and people continue to carry as they did before so Gemara says yeah i'm going to show you that there is a such a thing raven bar rav ada says in the name of it was an incident that happened with a mavoi that came before rebbe what was the case the case was that the mavoi didn't have side walls it had makeshift side walls on one side there was a garbage heap which sort of acted as a sidewall because it was tall and it was high. On the other side was the ocean. And the ocean, the shoreline dipped sharply down to the water and it was high enough of a dip to count as a wall. It was at least 10 tvachim. So this case came before Rebbe and Rebbe did not say that it's permitted to carry in there because these count as walls and he didn't say it's forbidden. Why? He didn't say it's forbidden because, hey, the walls are there, the garbage heap is a wall and the ocean cliff is a wall, the side wall. But he didn't say that's permitted because these are two walls that may disappear. Somebody may decide to move his garbage heap and then you won't have a wall there. And the ocean, the shoreline could extend outward. Sometimes the ocean brings in sand and rocks and it fills in the shoreline and it'll stand outward and then you won't have the shoreline functioning as a wall of the Mavoy all. Therefore, he didn't want people to carry there. Now, the Gemara says that that was an interesting sack. But we have a problem because there's a Mishnah that says that a garbage heap is a reliable um, you don't have to be afraid that it will d- d- disappear. And the case over there is if somebody has a trash heap outside his window, he's allowed to throw something from his window to the Rishos Hayachid of the garbage heap because it's tall. He doesn't have to be afraid that one day that that trash heap will be removed and now he'll be throwing things into Rishos Harabim. 
So, do you have to be afraid or not? How come Rebbe was afraid? Obviously, the reason is because if it's a privately owned yard or a privately owned garbage heap, then we have to be afraid that somebody may decide on his own to move it. And that's why Rebbe was concerned. But in the case of the mission, we're not concerned because that was a publicly owned heap. So you see that there is a difference between a privately owned and a publicly owned situation. And if it's privately owned, we're afraid that things may change or be moved. And if it's publicly owned, we're not afraid. Now the Gemara wants to know more deeply about this case over here of Rebbe, where he didn't want to say an Isra or a Heter, the Gemara says, what did the Chachamim say? So the Gemara says that Rabbi Yosef Bar Avdimi said that the Chachamim said that it's forbidden to carry her, we are afraid that it will be moved, and Rabbi Nachman said that Allah is like the Chachamim, it's forbidden. There's a different version of this, Rabbi Yosef Bar Avdimi said that the Chachamim actually said that it's permitted to carry there, and Rabbi Nachman said that the Allah is not like the Chachamim, meaning either way, Rabbi Nachman said that the Allah is stricter, uh, the more Chumrah approach, and that it's forbidden to carry there. Now, on a similar note, Maremar had a situation in Sura where the ocean was forming one wall of a Mavoy, and he didn't want to rely on it, so he put up sheets or nets of some sort at the end of the Mavoy where the ocean was, just in case the ocean shoreline should extend, that that wall should be there. Um... On a similar note, the Gemara says that there was a bent mavoy, an L-shaped mavoy in Sura, and somebody hung up in the corner, he stretched from one side of the corner to the other side of the corner, he stretched a sheet, and he thought that that would serve as a wall to divide this mavoy into two separate mavoys that are both closed. And the Gemara says that if Chizah said that this is not correct, this is not like Rav's opinion in a bent mavoy, not like Shmuel's opinion, they both hold you need something significant. This is totally insignificant. It blows in the wind and it's useless. The only way to make it significant is if he would attach pins or hooks to connect it to the ground so that it wouldn't blow in the wind. Okay, the Gemara now returns to the case of the Mavoy that uh, ran into a Chatzar. The wall fell down and it was open to the Chatzar, and then across the wall of the Chatzar was open into Rosh Hashanah. That's the case we began the daf with. And the says, what's the Chiddush of the statement of Rav in this case, where he says you're allowed to carry in the Chatzar, but you're not allowed to carry in the Mavoy? We have a specific uh, Mishnah that says this halacha. The Mishnah is referring to two Chatzaris that share a wall, and one Chatzar is wider than the other one. So it's kind of like two, the overall situation is a T-shape, with uh, the wall where the leg of the T joins the roof of the T. And the halach over there is that if the wall fell down, the, the shared wall fell down, so then you're allowed to carry in the roof of the T, because if you're standing in the roof of the T and you're looking into the leg of the T, that's, you see a doorway, it's less than a tenamis, and therefore it's not open. However, if you're standing in the leg of the tea chatzar and you're looking into the roof of the tea, then the entire wall that was shared fell down as far as you're concerned, and therefore is considered open to another chatzar and you're not allowed to carry there. So that's exactly the same as the situation which Rav said, in the mava you're allowed to carry, in the mava, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to carry, and in the chatzar you are allowed to carry. So what's the chiddush of here? So the Gemara says the chiddush is that you may have thought that here you're not allowed to carry in the chutzr, because you have Rosh Hashanah at either end. You have holes, and you could walk through from one Rosh Hashanah directly to the other Rosh Hashanah down the Mavay and across the yard. So you may think that you're not allowed to carry in the case of the chutzr, so it's two, uh, where it's a, chutz, a small chutzr and a big chutzr, it's two chutzeres. So nobody's walking through, it's not a through area. So therefore I have an extra chiddush of here. The Gemara says, that's not a chiddush either, we have that halacha specifically. If you have a chutzr, a yard, where there are holes in the walls, and the rabim, a vast majority, a vast amount of people shortcut across the yard, it still counts as a Rosh Hashanah in the halachas of Shabbos. In the halachas of Tumah, that Tumah is a suffix, Tumah is mutter, and Rosh Hashanah as far as that's concerned, it counts as a Rosh Hashanah But as far as the Shabbos, it counts as a Rosh Hashanah So you see that even though lots of people shortcut across your yard, it still counts as a Rosh Hashanah and we see that halacha already. I wouldn't need this case to teach me that. Where it says, no, that halacha we know in a case where the two... Um, holes in the wall that the people are crossing, short-cutting across the yard, 
that's where those holes are not directly across from each other. They're not lined up. But in our case, they are lined up, and therefore it's a bigger chiddush. Then which is what I mean. We just said earlier that Rabbah said that our case is where they're not lined up. So according to Rabbah, there's no chiddush here, because this is also not lined up, just like that case, which we already have, is not lined up. The Gemara says, okay, the chiddush is something else. When I say that a yard, a uh, chatzar, that people shortcut across, still counts as Rishul Sayyachid, I, that doesn't necessarily mean I can carry within it. I may think that it's only Rishul Sayyachid l'chumra, in the sense that I cannot bring something from Rishul Sayyachid into it because it's Rishul Sayyachid. That I can carry within it because it's counted as Rishul Sayyachid, that already you wouldn't see. That I need our statement of Rav here to teach me that even though people shortcut across it, it still counts as a Rishul Sayyachid and you can carry within it. Okay, now the Gemara goes on to a different case, which is similar to a machlokis we had earlier. We had a machlokis between Rav and Shmuel. What is the halacha of a bent mavi? That's a mavi which is L-shaped, and at each end it's open to Rosh Hashanah, but there's a bend in the middle. Do we count this as two separate mavois that are closed on three sides? Or do we count it as one long mavoi that's mafulish? It's open on both ends. According to Rav, I count it as mafulish, and therefore you need the special halachas to fix a mavoi mafulish. The mafulish is about that too. But you need at least a tzuras hapesach, possibly doorways. According to Shmuel, I count it as two closed mavois. Now, the Gemara now says, what if I have that same mavoi, but there are lots of little mavois branching off the main L? So it's kind of like an F, an F with a lot of cross lines. So what is the halacha? of this mavoi who over here so the Gemara has a machlokas abai and rava abai says you have to make a tzuras pesach in the middle of the big one at the bend of the big one and all the small ones you just have to make a regular tzuras uh, a regular thing you would have for a mavoi um you have to have a lechi or a kaira you have to have a side post or a Beam. Now, all these small mavois and the big ones all open at their other end into Rishos Harapim. That's why you need that over there. So the Gemara asks, Rava says, who, who is this Psak like? This is not going like Shmuel. According to Shmuel, it's a, uh, they're all, it's it's a mavoi sasim. It's a closed mavoi on all sides. Why would I need to have a Tzuras HaPesach anywhere? Um, and Additionally, how could you paskin like Shmuel? Even in Shmuel's hometown of Naharda, they paskin like Rav. So you can't do this. So therefore, Rav says you have to have a surah of Pesach at the entrance of every single small mavoi. And uh, that means where the mavoi, where the small mavoi meets the big mavoi, that makes that area considered closed. And then at the other end, where the small mavoi just hits Rosh Hashanah, you just need to have a regular beam, a cross beam, or side post, and that's all. The Gemara now switches gears to discuss the actual format of the installation of the beam, the cross beam, which we use at the end of a mavoi. So now we're talking about a pretty much regular mavoi. It's closed on three sides. It's open on one end to Rishas Rabbim. You have to put a cross beam or a lechi, a side post, in order to make it permitted to carry within it. And the basic question in all these cases will be, how does that cross beam function? Do we view it as just a symbol? It's a sign so that people walking will notice and say, hey, this is where the Mavli ends, this is where Rishas Rabbim starts. I can't carry across here, and I can't carry in Rishas Rabbim just because I can carry in the Mavli. Or does the function as a wall? It's actually technically a wall. We view the edge of the beam as if it descends halachically, comes down, and closes off the Mavli. Now the Mavli is sealed in, and it's got four walls. So the first question the Gemara discusses is what happens if the Mavli's two walls aren't even? One wall extends further into Rishas Rabbim than the other one does. So you could stand at one spot in Rishas Harabim and have a Mavoy wall, let's say, on your left, and it would still be open to Rishas Harabim on your right. How do you install that Mavoy's uh, crossbeam? Do you go straight across from the short wall to off the end of the long wall? You won't hit the end of it because you want to go straight across. So the crossbeam is, is installed in line with the Mavoy's front wall of the short wall so it's from corner to center of the wall 
Or do we go diagonal from corner to corner, from the left corner of the Mavoy to the right corner of the Mavoy, even though it's at an angle, do I install it that way? So the Gemara says the ruling here is a machlok. Is according to Rava, you have to go straight across. You can't go at an angle, you got to go straight across. According to several people in each other's name, who are actually interesting, all named Kahana, that's Rav Kahana Bar Tachlifa, in the name of Rav Kahana Bar Menyumi, in the name of Rav Kahana Bar Malkioi, who may or may not be saying in the name of Rav Kahana the Rebbe of Rav, or he might actually himself be Rav Kahana, the Rebbe of Rav. So they all say that there is a situation in which you can install it at an angle from corner to corner, and that's if the distance that the long wall extends further than the short wall is less than four hours. In a case like that, you're allowed to install it at an angle. Now, Rav says, I'll explain the reasoning over here. According to me, you have to install it straight, and that's because I hold that the beam functions as a sign. It's a symbol for people to see. Now, what's going to happen if it's installed at an angle? Somebody's going to see, hey, that guy's carrying next to the wall, but he's out in Rishos Arabim because he's on the other side of the angled beam, but he looks like he's exposed to Rishos Arabim because on one side there is no Mavoy wall. And people won't understand that he's really on the other side of the beam, which is at an angle. They'll see that he's out in the street. And therefore, it won't be functional anymore. Um, according to you guys, the reasoning of the functioning of a beam to set off the Mavoy is that it's like a wall that extends straight down. So if it's like a wall, so you can have it at an angle, it's not a problem. It's an angled wall, and as long as you're on the Mavoy side of the wall, which is the beam, you're okay. Not an issue. So now, Rav Kahana, who's not any of the previously quoted Rav Kahana, says, since this is a Kahana studio, everybody here who's speaking is named Kahana, I'm going to add something as well. If you install it at an angle, the length of that angle beam can't be more than 10 amas, because it's really a doorway. So you can't, a beam alone is not functional over a gap that's more than a 10 amas, so it can't be more than 10 amas. Okay, now the words next question is, are you allowed to carry under the beam itself? This is a regular, normal mavoy. Under the beam itself, are you allowed to carry or not? And the Gemara says, Machlogis, Rav, and Rabbi Chia, and Rabbi Echanan say you're allowed to carry under the beam. Shmuel, and Rabbi Shimon, Bar Rebbe and Rishim and Ben Lakish all say you're not allowed to carry under the beam. What's a machokes? And Mar says it's the same thing. Does the beam count as a sign or does it count as a wall? If the beam counts as a sign, so then what is the purpose of the sign? It's to show the people in Rishim and that this is a mavoi. Therefore, what's the functional part of it? It's the outer part of the beam that is functional. That's where the people in Rishim and Rabbim see. And that's showing them you can't carry past here. So that means that under the beam itself, you're past the sign. That's inside the mavo you're allowed to carry there. According to the other approach, it's the it's a wall. And it's the inner edge of the beam that serves as the wall. Therefore, under the beam itself is outside the mavo you can't carry there. Umar says, no, this doesn't have to be the pshat. I could say that everybody agrees um, that the Mavoy serves as a sign, and the question is, which side is it a sign? Is the outer edge of the sign, or is the inner edge of the sign? Is the outer edge a sign to the people in the Shusarabim, and that's what we're concerned about, them going into the Mavoy, or is the inner edge the sign, because we're concerned about the people in the Mavoy carrying out into the Shusarabim, and therefore we need a sign for them. And there's another way of explaining this, and that is that everybody agrees that it's a wall. And the question is, is the inner edge the wall, or is the outer edge serving as the wall? Which one halachically extends downward and serves as the wall? Now, Rav Chizah adds halacha here. Rav Chizah says that if you didn't have a beam, you had a side post, you had a lechi, everybody agrees you cannot carry parallel to the lechi, next to the lechi, only from the lechi and inwards. And the reason for that is because lechi doesn't have a minimum width. It could be any size, and therefore we don't want you carrying next to the lechi itself. Now the Gemara has another question. Can I install the cross beam, not on top of the walls of the Mavoy, but attached towards the top in the front of the walls of the Mavoy? How would I do that? I can install two sticks in the walls of the Mavoy, and I have the beam resting across from it. So it's not over the top of the wall, but at least it's near the top of the wall. And the Gemara originally wants to say this also depends on the Mechokes, whether or not you're allowed to carry under the beam itself. Uh, which is dependent on the other machlokas we discussed. If the if you're not allowed to carry under the beam, 
that means that the wall that comes down or the sign is on the outside edge. If it's on the outside edge and if you install it this way, then it's not on the mavoi. It's a tefach at least away from the mavoi because it's the outside edge. If it's the inside edge, then it's okay because it's flush against the mavoi. So Rava says, no, 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 no. It's forbidden either way. This doesn't work no matter how you hold because the beam has to be on top of the mavoi walls. It can't be in front of the mavoi walls. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.